Welcome to the Idaho Business Podcast, the only Idaho podcast focused on providing profits for Idaho people. If you love our state and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Idaho Business Podcast with your friend, host, and all-around great guy and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Idaho Business Podcast. We are here with Marvin L. Storm. Uh, this guy is a... He's been in business for years, and he has been a leader within this, these businesses um, throughout his whole life. This guy knows the franchise world. He knows uh, the business, you know, coaching and and uh, and finance world. He he just he's a man of many skills here, and he was uh, nice enough to grace us with his presence on this podcast. And he's also uh, the most important thing right now. He's also a podcast host at Business Exit Stories Podcast. So go follow him him there, and we'll give him another shout out towards the end, and he can give you more information on that. But welcome, Marvin. Oh, it's great to be here. I uh, love your part of the world, and uh, I'm from California, and uh, a lot of people from the West Coast here are making their way uh, up into your neck of the woods. So uh, <laughs> I know uh, a lot of folks that have... Uh, are now Idaans instead of California Californians. Right. So everyone listening, don't don't tune out right now. He's one of the good ones. So <laughs> stay stay tuned in here. He's got some light a light a lot to share here. But yeah, no, exactly. You know, like I said uh, when we were talking before, we've got many Californians. I think it's up to three thousand a month going into Boise, and you know I've seen people. It's, it's hard to believe that 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 statistic is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and your your state population is shrinking and ours is growing like crazy. So it's 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 crazy. So well, awesome. I, I need to I need to say, like always, we are sponsored by Sensations. These guys are located have locations in Twin Falls, Idaho, and, and Pocatello. Uh, they do a phenomenal job at helping you feel and look good uh, with their with their tanning options with spray tan or tanning beds. Uh, you can get your massages, your your you know, Manny Petties, anything you need, uh, along with even uh, cocoon wellness beds and red light therapy treatments, they've got it all for you. If you go into their locations and mention that you heard about them on the podcast, they will give you your first tanning session for free. So go check them out in either their Twin Falls location or Pocatello location located conveniently next to Gold's Gym. So Marvin, is there maybe you'd start off a little bit, share something, maybe a little known fun or interesting fact about yourself. It's always fun to start that way. Well, I uh, am not, you know, I, I live in a, I lived in the San Francisco Bay area for most of my career, uh, which is a large city, but I come from a very small town in South Dakota. Uh, at the time that I grew up, it was around 3,000, 3,500 people, you know, maybe at the stretch. Uh, and it's still a relatively small town and uh, just outside of the Black Hills, a uh, little town called Belfouche, South Dakota. So I grew up in a, uh, a world that was much like for those that are old enough to remember the Andy Taylor show, you know, Opie Taylor, uh, you know, that uh, went fishing with his father, Andy, who was the sheriff of Mayberry, if you remember all that. So I grew up in uh, a very small town. So that's a little known fact about myself. I like it. I'm also a small town boy. I grew up in about a little over 2,000 people. Wow. So you, I, I come from the big city then, huh? Yeah, you're a big city. <laughs> so, well, perfect. Well, Marvin, you, 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 you host a podcast entitled The Business Exit Stories. Um, and you know quite about it. Uh, wow, if I could speak today. Uh, you know a lot about this uh, subject. And that's something I've wanted to talk about within this podcast because we talk a lot about structuring your business, you know, running your core business with core values, having, you know, organized and, and numbers, knowing your numbers. And I've always wanted to have someone on to talk about why you do all this. It's not, it's not just because you want to do it. It's because you have an end, end goal in mind and to sell eventually. So walk us yeah, through, walk us through, I guess, sorry, walk us through 
um, kind of how businesses that you see, you know, maybe, maybe a story where, so, cause I know there's 85, I know I'm rambling now, but I know there's about 85% of businesses don't sell. Is that the stat? That's a little known stat, a uh, more common stat that a lot of people know and it's talked about a lot are the number of businesses that get started and launched don't uh, have a high probability of succeeding. Sure. Uh, but a, a statistic that isn't talked about much is all of the businesses, and this is the total universe of businesses that are listed for sale on an annual basis, over 85% or nearly 85% of them don't find a buyer. And there's a reason for that. Uh, it shouldn't be that way. No. Uh, most businesses, if properly positioned to sell, uh, would find a buyer. Okay. What are some of the key factors that um, maybe even if they're not positioned well, that, that keep people away from those type of businesses? Is it only the fact that maybe they're not owner absentee businesses or what are some of the facts that you're seeing, some of the factors? Well, I often get asked the question, you know, why in the heck would I want to think about selling my business? I'm just, uh, you know, focused on growing and scaling my business. I don't have time to think about exiting it. Uh, and there's a lot of truth to that statement. But uh, the fact is, is that if you don't start thinking at some point in time about uh, monetizing all that hard work, I mean, you're spending 10, 12 hours a day, sometimes six and seven days a week, building and scaling your business. And you may be making you know, a good living doing it. Um, but, you know, there is value or should be value being created there. And you should be able to figure out at some point in time that you're probably not going to live forever. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, there's only a couple of things that can happen to your business. And that is, uh, you're going to pass your business on to someone inside of the company, someone that uh, you know, an employee, a family member, a partner, someone like that, or you're going to sell it to someone and pass it on to someone you don't know, and that's a third party. Uh, or you're going to wind it down and go out of business. You know, So those are really your only three choices since you aren't sure. going to live forever. Uh, you're going to pass it on to someone you know, someone you don't know, or you're just going to wind it down and, and leave the business. And if those are your choices, then you should at some point in time think about which of those is best going to fit your particular situation and start doing things to kind of move the business toward that eventual uh, exit or sale. I like that. I like that a lot because I, I, I know... I know a lot, many, many business owners, and it's interesting to see how all of them run their businesses. Some run it like, hey, this is my personal bank account. I'm going to just, you know, take all the cash out of it. There's others that, you know, maybe don't fully understand their numbers and uh, and don't really, and, and don't even have an exit strategy in mind. They think they're going to, because when, when you're, young, you're young, you think you're going to live forever. You think nothing ever bad is going to happen to you. You know, and that's just not the world we live in. And, well, that's true. Uh, that's yeah, absolutely and, true. And then we, and then, we, then I find business owners that are are very astute on they know what they're going to do. They know maybe, maybe they even have a five or a seven or a ten year plan in place, and uh, everything's on you know on point as much as they can. We don't live in a perfect world, but what we'll, maybe what would be some of the uh, maybe. You have maybe three free tips for us or something that these business owners could think of like, wow, maybe I'm about ready to hang it up or I'm, I'm starting to think of what, what my next, you know, avenue in life is going to look like. How do I, how do I get out of this business? Well, I think that everyone that has a business owes it to themselves and their family and their employees uh, to create uh, something that has some legs and that will outlast them. Uh, if you're going to spend all that time building up a brand and building up a, a customer base, uh, there's value created there. And you really owe it to yourself to begin to think about how you can perpetuate that at, you know, down the road, maybe that it would actually outlive you and continue on without you. And in order to do that, you really, like you mentioned, there are people that 
kind of ride the wave of running their business and don't think a lot about the financial side of their business or anything that's really going to happen a few years down the road and those that do. Um, and if you're one of those that don't, uh, you really do need to kind of shift into that mindset. I mentioned the question that I get asked a lot is, why do I want to think about exiting my business when I'm busy building it? Well, it's, you know, that that is a question that is more about mindset than it is about actual time that you spend in and put in uh, to thinking about selling your business way, way before that time comes or selling it or exiting it as the case may be. It's more of a mindset. I'll give you an example. Uh, if you're a business that has a lease, uh, one of the common mistakes that a lot of business owners make is that when they're signing that lease, uh, they don't really think about the assignability of that lease. And mm. if you either decide to sell your business or maybe something happens, maybe you go to the doctor and you get a bad diagnosis, you know, that uh, uh, isn't that great. And it forces you into an early exit to your business that was unplanned or, or whatever the situation may be. Uh, having not thought through that simple issue of is that lease assignable? Uh, or is the, you know, what, what would happen in the event that you sold your business? And if you haven't given that some thought, it can actually derail uh, a sale of a business because of the business uh, lease not being uh, assignable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's those little things. So there wasn't a lot of work that had to be done in, when you're thinking about actually positioning a business for an exit at some point in time. It's really a thought process or a mindset of uh, how those uh, issues will affect uh, the future of your business. And, you know, another thing is that uh, you mentioned culture in uh, one of the comments you made a little bit earlier about your core values and things of that nature. Amazingly enough, those things actually do translate into value in your business. Uh, if you had two businesses that were relatively similar uh, had a similar type of financial performance and sales and profitability. And uh, a buyer was looking at those two businesses. Uh, and one had a great culture and one had kind of a sketchy culture. And, you know, it was obvious that people weren't all that excited about going to work every day or customers that weren't all that loyal, but the financial performance was relatively similar. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out which of those businesses would probably uh, gravitate uh, finding it a lot easier to find a buyer for those businesses. So culture and customer satisfaction and those things actually do translate into value, if not in actual dollar value in the terms that you will be able to get when you sell your business. How much money are people going to put down? Uh, are they going to require you to stay for a transition period in the business? Uh, those type of things become almost as important as the dollars you're going to put in your pocket uh, after the sell, sale of your business. I love that. I love that because, <laughs> number one, that makes me feel good because, okay, I've been telling it, my audience for, for over a year now about the core values and having that culture is, is something huge, especially now in this hiring epidemic that we're in right now. So, uh, no, that's 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 wonderful. And I think that's, you're right on uh, talking that way. Um, I'm going to reach out of the, in, not co completely out of the box here, <clears throat> but I want to speak and ask you a question about there's the, the business owners that number one, they think, Oh, I, I can't show a bunch of profit. I'm going to get taxed on all that profit. So I'm going to have to write everything off, write everything off, but then they don't realize, Hey, if I ever want to, grow my company and need to finance something for my business. You know, the bank's going to look at that and see, Hey, there's no, there's no profit. Or if I go to sell my company, what kind of impact does that have when someone has been running their company thinking right off, right off, right off. Whereas hanging, instead of saying, Hey, this is the profit. This is what it is. I'm going to pay my fair share of taxes and move on with my life. The Idaho Business Podcast is sponsored by Dell's Outdoor Advertising. These guys are an institution. 
when it comes to billboard advertising traditionally or digital uh, billboard trend, uh, advertising. They are represented from Pocatello all the way to Blackfoot. And they will tell you uh, this is a great way, and I will tell you this is a great way to have top of mind awareness for your clients, your potential clients. Uh, there are some great things that still can be accomplished from billboards, uh, even, even though we're in the Facebook and social media marketing you know, realms of the world right now. So if you, you contact uh, Rob and you, and you set up a three-month uh, deal to be on the billboard, he'll give you your installation for free or your, um, or your first month for free, excuse me. And again, you can go to idahobusinesspodcast.com, click on their logo, their name, and find their information to get that deal rolling for yourself. And they are fantastic at it. So go see them today. The Idaho Business Podcast is sponsored by New Clean Commercial Cleaning. This is my company, guys. I'm telling you, I'm not just because I'm the owner, uh, the, the creator of it, but uh, we are a great company for servicing uh, your janitorial needs, your carpet cleaning needs, your stripping wax needs, all your floor maintenance needs. We are there for you. Uh, we're all, every, and everything is backed up by the we're not perfect guarantee. And if it's pretty much if we, if you call and we don't get a hold, of, they, you don't get a hold of us, uh, we will call you back within an hour and fix the problem within 24 hours or the cleanings on us. So that is our promise to you. Uh, and if you call or go into the Idaho Business Podcast uh, website, click on the new clean logo and book a uh, janitorial solution huddle with us and mention that you heard about us on the podcast, you'll, and you'll get two free office, I mean, the two free restroom floor cleanings for your office for free. Tile and grout in your restrooms will be sparkling clean. And that's, that's the offer. Tell you, take us up on it. You won't regret it. There's no strings attached. So go see them today. Our sponsor is Fresh Prep Foods. These guys are phenomenal. They offer fresh alternative food Instead of going out and grabbing a cheeseburger real quick, you've got food already in your fridge, and you can pick them up uh, because they service from from Burley all the way to Idaho Falls. They have convenient pickup locations, or they'll deliver them to you. Go on to the idlebusinesspodcast.com, click on their name or logo, and you will see that they have a promo code, Idaho Business, that you enter into their site. And if you sign up, you'll get your first meal for free and another meal to give to whoever you want, just courtesy of the Idaho Business Podcast. So go give them a try. Go sign up right now. This is the end of part one of a two-part episode. Tune in next time to hear part two. Congratulations on spending a couple of minutes getting a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Idaho business community. If you're feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are. 